Today, we're diving into seven common grocery staples that are disappearing from shelves and might never come back. Various factors are leading to the scarcity of these foods, including production challenges, disease outbreaks, and market changes. Let's explore what these items are and why they're vanishing. Number one, canned sardines. Canned sardines, once a pantry staple for their convenience and nutritional benefits, are becoming increasingly difficult to find in stores due to a significant decline in sardine populations. This decline is primarily attributed to overfishing and poor fishery management practices. For example, the sardine population off the coast of California has experienced a dramatic reduction. According to data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, sardine stocks in this region have plummeted by approximately 98% since 2006. This sharp decline has led to the closure of fisheries in an effort to allow sardine populations to recover. However, recovery is a slow process, and the immediate impact is a noticeable scarcity of canned sardines in the market. The issue is not confined to California alone. Globally, sardine populations are under pressure from overfishing. In regions such as the North Atlantic and the Mediterranean, sardine stocks are similarly stressed. The high demand for sardines, coupled with inadequate regulatory measures, has resulted in unsustainable fishing practices. Sardines are often harvested in large quantities, with little regard for maintaining healthy population levels. Monterey Bay Aquarium's Seafood Watch program has highlighted the critical status of sardine populations. They have recommended that consumers avoid purchasing sardines from overfished regions to help alleviate pressure on these populations. Sustainable fishing practices, such as setting catch limits and protecting breeding grounds, are essential to ensure the long-term viability of sardine stocks. In addition to overfishing, environmental factors are also contributing to the decline of sardine populations. Changes in ocean temperature and acidity, largely driven by climate change, affect the availability of plankton, the primary food source for sardines. These changes can lead to shifts in sardine distribution and abundance, further complicating recovery efforts. The scarcity of canned sardines has broader implications for the food industry and consumers. Sardines are a valuable source of protein, omega-3 fatty acids, and essential nutrients. They are also relatively affordable and have a long shelf life, making them an important food resource for many people. The decline in sardine availability not only affects consumer choices, but also has economic impacts on the fishing industry and related sectors. Efforts to address the decline in sardine populations include stricter fishery management policies and international cooperation to enforce sustainable fishing practices. Marine conservation organizations advocate for measures such as marine protected areas where fishing is restricted or prohibited to allow fish populations to recover. Additionally, there is a push for more rigorous scientific research to better understand the factors affecting sardine populations and to develop effective management strategies. Number two, orange juice. Orange juice, a staple in many households, faces significant challenges due to the devastating effects of citrus greening disease, Huang Long Bing or HLB. This bacterial disease has wreaked havoc on citrus crops, particularly in Florida, one of the largest orange producing regions in the United States. Citrus greening disease is caused by the bacterium Candidatus liberobacter asiaticus, which is spread by the Asian citrus psyllid, a tiny insect that feeds on the leaves and stems of citrus trees. Once a tree is infected, the bacteria impede the flow of nutrients by clogging the tree's phloem vessels. This results in the production of small, misshapen, and bitter fruits and eventually leads to the tree's death. The disease is relentless and has no known cure making management and control extremely challenging. In Florida, citrus greening was first detected in 2005. Since then, it has spread rapidly, leading to a dramatic decline in orange production. Florida's orange production has plummeted by over 70% in the past two decades. 
The impact on the industry has been catastrophic, affecting not only the availability of fresh oranges, but also the production of orange juice. As a result, orange juice has become scarcer and more expensive. Efforts to combat citrus greening include extensive research into disease-resistant citrus varieties, biological control methods, and improved management practices. Scientists at the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences, IFAS, are at the forefront of this research, exploring genetic modification and traditional breeding techniques to develop trees that can withstand the disease. Additionally, researchers are investigating the use of antimicrobial treatments and insecticides to control the spread of the Asian citrus psyllid. Another significant aspect of managing citrus greening involves early detection and removal of infected trees to prevent the spread of the disease. Growers are encouraged to implement strict sanitation practices and regular monitoring to identify and manage outbreaks promptly. Despite these efforts, the disease continues to spread and many groves have been abandoned due to the high cost of maintaining infected trees. The economic impact of citrus greening extends beyond the farmers to the entire supply chain, including processors, distributors, and retailers. The decrease in orange production has led to higher prices for consumers and has forced some producers to import oranges from other countries to meet demand. This reliance on imports further complicates the industry as imported oranges may not have the same flavor profile and quality as domestically grown fruit. In response to the crisis, some orange juice brands have shifted their marketing strategies, emphasizing blends with other fruit juices or promoting products made from different citrus varieties less susceptible to greening. These adjustments help mitigate the impact on the market, but cannot fully replace the traditional orange juice that consumers know and love. Number three, chocolate. Chocolate, one of the world's most beloved treats, is facing a potential crisis due to several factors affecting cacao production. One significant threat is the cacao swollen shoot virus, CSSV, which severely impacts the health and productivity of cacao trees. CSSV causes the tree to produce fewer pods, with infected trees often dying within a few years. This disease has been particularly devastating in West Africa, which produces about 70% of the world's cacao. CSSV is spread by mealybugs, which transfer the virus from tree to tree. Once a tree is infected, it shows symptoms like red vein banding, leaf chlorosis, and swelling of the shoots, which can eventually lead to the death of the tree. Efforts to combat CSSV include the development of resistant cacao varieties, improved pest management practices, and rigorous quarantine measures to prevent the spread of the virus. Despite these efforts, the current impact on production is significant, with some estimates suggesting a potential shortfall in chocolate supply in the coming decades. Aging cacao trees compound the problem, as older trees are less productive and more susceptible to diseases. Many cacao farms in West Africa consist of trees that are decades old and replacing these with new, more productive varieties is a slow and costly process. This has led to decreased yields and increased vulnerability to pests and diseases. Another challenge facing the chocolate industry is the fluctuation in global cacao prices. Smallholder farmers, who produce the majority of the world's cacao, are particularly vulnerable to these price changes. Low prices can discourage investment in farm maintenance and improvement, exacerbating the issues of low productivity and disease management. Efforts to provide fair trade certification and improve market stability are ongoing, but the economic pressures on cacao farmers remain a critical issue. Climate change is also impacting cacao production. Changes in temperature and rainfall patterns affect the growth and yield of cacao trees. For example, cacao trees require specific conditions to thrive, including high humidity and consistent rainfall. Shifts in these conditions can stress the trees and reduce their productivity. 
research into climate resilient cacao varieties and adaptive farming practices is essential to mitigate these effects. The demand for chocolate continues to rise, driven by growing markets in Asia and sustained demand in Europe and North America. This increasing demand puts additional pressure on cacao production, which is already struggling with the aforementioned challenges. The potential shortfall in supply could lead to higher prices and changes in the chocolate market, such as the development of alternative ingredients or blends to stretch cacao supplies. Number four, honey. Honey production is facing a significant decline due to several critical factors impacting bee populations. Colony collapse disorder, CCD, is one of the primary causes. CCD occurs when the majority of worker bees in a colony disappear, leaving behind a queen and a few nurse bees to care for the remaining immature bees. This disorder severely weakens the colony, leading to its collapse. The exact cause of CCD is still under investigation, but it is believed to be the result of multiple stressors, including pesticide exposure, pathogens, and environmental changes. Pesticides particularly neonicotinoids, are known to have adverse effects on bee health. These chemicals, used widely in agriculture, can impair bees' ability to forage, navigate, and reproduce. Chronic exposure to even low levels of neonicotinoids can weaken bees, making them more susceptible to diseases and reducing their lifespan. Studies have shown a strong correlation between pesticide use and the decline in bee populations prompting calls for stricter regulations and alternative pest management strategies. Varroa mites also pose a significant threat to honeybees. These external parasites attach to bees and feed on their bodily fluids, weakening them and transmitting viruses. Varroa destructor is the most prevalent and destructive mite species affecting honeybees worldwide. Infested colonies often experience high mortality rates if the mite populations are not effectively controlled. Beekeepers use various treatments, including chemical miticides and mechanical controls, to manage varroa mite infestations, but these methods are not always completely effective and can sometimes harm the bees. Habitat loss is another major factor contributing to the decline in bee populations. Urbanization, agricultural expansion, and deforestation have led to the destruction of many natural habitats that bees rely on for forage. The reduction in floral diversity and availability of nectar and pollen sources has made it more difficult for bees to find the nutrition they need to thrive. Efforts to restore habitats, such as planting wildflowers and preserving natural landscapes, are crucial for supporting healthy bee populations. In the United States, the decline in honeybee colonies has been alarming. According to the Bee Informed Partnership, beekeepers have reported annual colony losses, averaging around 40% in recent years. This decline has significant implications not only for honey production, but also for the broader agricultural sector. Honey bees are vital pollinators for numerous crops, including fruits, vegetables, and nuts. The reduction in bee populations threatens food security and biodiversity, highlighting the urgent need for comprehensive measures to protect these essential pollinators. Research and conservation efforts are ongoing to address the challenges facing honeybees. Scientists are working to develop more resilient bee strains through selective breeding and genetic research. Improved beekeeping practices such as integrated pest management and enhanced hive management techniques are also being promoted to mitigate the effects of CCD and other stressors. Additionally, public awareness campaigns and policy initiatives aim to reduce pesticide use and protect natural habitats, ensuring a sustainable environment for bees. Number five, rice. Rice, a staple food for billions of people worldwide, is facing significant challenges that threaten its global supply water scarcity, soil salinization, groundwater depletion, and arsenic contamination are key factors putting pressure on rice production, particularly in major rice-producing countries like India and China. 
In India, groundwater depletion is a critical issue affecting rice cultivation. The extensive use of groundwater for irrigation has led to a significant drop in water tables. A study by the Indian Institute of Technology, TT, revealed that the overextraction of groundwater, especially in states like Punjab and Haryana, is unsustainable and could severely impact rice yields. The over-reliance on groundwater is exacerbated by inefficient irrigation practices and the lack of adequate rainfall further straining water resources. China, another major rice producer, is also grappling with water scarcity. The country's rapid industrialization and urbanization have diverted significant water resources away from agriculture, leading to reduced water availability for rice paddies. Additionally, pollution from industrial activities has contaminated many water sources, rendering them unsuitable for irrigation. The Chinese government has implemented measures to improve water use efficiency and promote sustainable agricultural practices, but the challenges remain daunting. Soil salinization is another pressing issue affecting rice production. In coastal regions and areas with poor drainage, the accumulation of salts in the soil can severely reduce crop yields. Saline soils hinder the uptake of water and nutrients by rice plants, leading to stunted growth and lower productivity. This problem is particularly acute in countries like Bangladesh and Vietnam, where rising sea levels and saltwater intrusion are exacerbating soil salinity. Efforts to develop salt-tolerant rice varieties are underway, but widespread adoption and effectiveness are still in progress. Arsenic contamination in rice paddies poses a significant health risk and reduces the quality and safety of the crop. Arsenic can enter the soil and water through the use of contaminated groundwater and pesticides. Once absorbed by rice plants, arsenic accumulates in the grains, posing serious health risks to consumers. Chronic exposure to arsenic can lead to various health issues, including cancer, cardiovascular diseases, and developmental problems. Researchers at the International Rice Research Institute, ERRI, are working on breeding rice varieties that absorb less arsenic and implementing agricultural practices that reduce arsenic uptake. The Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, highlights the need for integrated water resource management and sustainable agricultural practices to address these challenges. Promoting the use of efficient irrigation techniques, such as drip irrigation and alternate wetting and drying, can help conserve water and reduce the stress on groundwater resources. Additionally, improving soil management practices and adopting precision farming techniques can mitigate the effects of soil salinization and enhance rice productivity. Number six, bananas. Banana crops worldwide are facing a serious threat from fusarium wilt, also known as tropical race 4 TR4. This soil-borne fungus infects the vascular system of banana plants, causing them to wilt and die. The disease is particularly devastating for the Cavendish variety, which constitutes about 99% of global banana exports. Fusarium wilt has already caused significant losses in major banana-producing regions, leading to economic distress and concerns about future banana availability. Fusarium wilt is caused by the fungus Fusarium oxysporum F. Er, sp. cubense. This pathogen enters the plant through the roots and colonizes the vascular tissue, disrupting the transport of water and nutrients. Infected plants exhibit yellowing leaves, wilting, and eventually death. The fungus is highly resilient and can persist in the soil for decades making it difficult to eradicate once it has established itself in a plantation. The spread of TR4 has been rapid and alarming. Initially confined to Southeast Asia, the disease has now been reported in Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America. These regions are crucial for global banana production. And the spread of TR4 poses a serious threat to the livelihoods of farmers and the supply of bananas to international markets. Efforts to combat fusarium wilt include developing disease-resistant banana varieties. Researchers are employing various breeding techniques, including traditional crossbreeding and genetic modification, to create new strains of bananas 
that can withstand TR4. However, developing and distributing these resistant varieties on a large scale is a complex and time-consuming process. In addition to breeding efforts, integrated pest management practices are being promoted to slow the spread of TR4. These practices include stringent sanitation measures such as disinfecting tools and machinery, controlling the movement of soil and plants, and implementing quarantine zones to prevent the introduction of the fungus into uninfected areas. Farmers are also being encouraged to adopt crop rotation and soil health management practices to reduce the pathogen's impact. Despite these efforts, the economic impact of TR4 on banana production has been significant. Smallholder farmers, who make up a large portion of banana growers, are particularly vulnerable. The loss of banana crops due to fusarium wilt can result in severe financial hardship, as many farmers rely on banana production as their primary source of income. The situation is further complicated by the fact that the Cavendish banana is a monoculture, meaning that the genetic uniformity of the crop makes it highly susceptible to diseases like TR4. This lack of genetic diversity limits the ability of the crop to adapt to new threats, underscoring the need for a more diverse and resilient agricultural system. The international community is responding to the TR4 crisis with increased funding for research and development, as well as support for affected farmers. Organizations such as the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO and Bioversity International are working to coordinate global efforts to combat the disease and promote sustainable banana production practices. Number seven, maple syrup. Maple syrup production is under significant strain due to a combination of factors affecting the health and yield of maple trees. One of the primary threats to these trees is the Asian longhorned beetle, an invasive species that has caused widespread damage. The beetles bore into the trunks and branches of maple trees, disrupting the flow of sap and nutrients, which can eventually kill the trees. Infestations have led to substantial losses in key maple syrup-producing regions. In addition to pest infestations, inconsistent sap flow has become a major issue. Warmer winters and shorter tapping seasons, influenced by climate variability, reduce the period during which sap flows from the trees. Sap flow is highly dependent on specific weather conditions. Cold nights and warm days are essential for optimal sap production. When these conditions are not met, sap yield drops, impacting the overall production of maple syrup. The health of maple trees is also compromised by other pests and diseases. For instance, the forest tent caterpillar and the gypsy moth are other pests that defoliate trees, weakening them and making them more susceptible to other stresses. Moreover, the sugar maple borer and various fungal infections can also cause significant damage to maple trees, further reducing their ability to produce sap. Environmental stressors, including droughts and soil degradation, contribute to the declining health of maple trees. Prolonged dry periods can stress the trees, leading to decreased sap production and increased vulnerability to pests and diseases. Soil degradation, due to both natural and human activities, affects the nutrients available to the trees, impacting their growth and sap yield. Over the past decade, some regions have reported up to a 30% decrease in maple syrup production. This decline is not only due to the factors mentioned, but also influenced by changes in land use. Urbanization and deforestation reduce the available habitat for maple trees, further limiting production areas. Efforts to mitigate these challenges include research and development of pest-resistant maple tree varieties and improved forest management practices. The University of Vermont's Proctor Maple Research Center is at the forefront of studying these issues and developing strategies to support sustainable maple syrup production. They are exploring techniques to enhance tree health and resilience, including soil management practices and pest control methods. Producers are also adapting by implementing better sap collection techniques and optimizing tapping methods to maximize yield. For instance, vacuum tubing systems are increasingly used to improve sap collection efficiency. 
These systems can help compensate for lower sap flow during less than ideal weather conditions. Organizations like the National Maple Syrup Producers Association are working to support producers through education and advocacy. They promote best practices in syrup production and provide resources to help producers manage the various threats to their trees.